welcome to God's house. Amen. I know you're ready to worship. I know your heart is in the right place because I see the choir is full of people and you fail to invite somebody to sit here so the choir would have a place to sit. But I'm going to tell you, go ahead and invite somebody. Because the choir can sit up here through the message if they need to. Amen. So we thank, thank God for the choir. Thank God for you. Um, we have gone through several losses in our church. That's right. um, Brother Tommy's uncle, their family, um, Brother Calvin and their family, and it's so good to see Kimberly and Stephen here this morning. Welcome. Um, I look around, there are some that have not been in a while. Welcome back. Uh, let me say also, we've got Tommy Lovett that's recovering. Uh, we've got Donna O'Berry that still needs prayer. She's recovering. Uh, Brandon and Xander continues to need your prayer. So I'm going to find a way to extend this thing up here. So I can speak in it. I have to lay down to talk to you. But, but I'm, I'm going to try to talk as loud as I can. But let me just say that God knows what you're going through. And God made you a promise if we come to worship him that his Holy Spirit would be here to meet your needs. So I want you are here. I want you to just commit yourself and your need to God. And God is faithful to take care of those things. Um, We've got our pastor here this morning. He's got his mask on to keep from taking a chance on the devil trying to load him down with more than he's carrying. But even though he's got his mask on, I can see him smiling. He's proud to be here. We're proud to have him here. And we're proud to have each one of you. God loves and expects our praise. So we're going to worship, we're going to pray, and we're going to give him thanks. Let us pray. Father, God, we are living in a time of confusion. And God, we could be distraught. We could be confused ourselves. But God, I pray as we come into your house this morning, we will remember what you said, that you are not the author of our confusion. You are the healer and the strength to help us overcome those confusions. God, it's a special day. It's a beautiful day. It's the day of Sabbath. It's the day of worship. And we've come to worship you. We do live those that are going through physical struggles. We lift up those that have lost 
friends or family members. And God, you made them a promise, and I pray they would just hold on to the promise. You said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And God, you have a purpose and a plan and a calling for every person in this church. And that calling is to lift up your name, offer a smile of love wherever we go, and to just give you thanks for the opportunity. God, bless our choir, the musicians, bless our congregation, God, to be able to give praise, to feel joy, and to receive power. And God, I pray for Danny that he will continue the road to healing forever. We are grateful be with Richard as he comes to share your word. And God, we're here not only to, to, to listen, but we're here to carry that word to those that may be lost. And God, I would lift up the nation that's experiencing war, the Ukraine, God, you've got children, children of yours that live in Russia and the Ukraine. And God, we just ask you to bring, to perform a miracle, God. It's going to take a miracle because when men lose their direction, God, there's only one that can show them the way, and that's you. And we just want to thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pray you all came this morning to be blessed by the Lord. So stand with us, and we're going to sing, I am blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. should be singing this song with a smile on our face because we are blessed to live in the United States. We're not hiding out in a bomb shelter. We're not waiting for the next plane to come through and bomb our family or a tank to run over us. We're safe. We're in God's house because we chose to be here. Amen? We chose. We get to be in God's house today. There are many over in the world that don't have that promise and that chance this morning. So put a smile on your face. Let me see you smile. Everybody smile. It's a good day. You're in God's house and you came for a reason. So let's sing like it and let's give God our praise this morning and tell him I'm blessed because I'm alive and I'm blessed because you live in my heart and I'm blessed because I get to be in your house today and sing and praise about you. Amen. So let's sing. I am blessed. Give it your best. 
Wake up.
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, Lord, we're just grateful and thankful that we woke up today. There are some people that didn't even wake up. There's people that are homesick and in bed and like to be here, Lord. We are so grateful and thankful for your strength and help, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity we have to come together with brothers and sisters in Christ and worship and praise you and lift your name up. Lord, you made us for you, uh, for your service and your glory, where you was not made for us, but we were made to love and serve you. Help us rejoice and be glad in that. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give. I pray and ask you take this offering that we receive, that you bless it. Help us use it for your glory and your honor and your building your kingdom. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. so humble for the opportunity to come back in your house and worship you, Lord. We thank you for these tithes and these offerings. We ask that you multiply them for your kingdom. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to sing, There is no problem too big that God cannot handle. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. 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 Funny little story. About two months ago, I played this little game 
that these little bubbles that are different colors and you have to match them all up and you have to get it in the right pattern, you know, and it's really frustrating. And I had been working on this one pattern for a solid week. And I was about done with it. Like, you don't know about y'all, but I tend to quit things when I can't move on. <laughs> and so I was about done with it, and I tried it one more time, and I said, okay, Lord. I said, help me get this so I can move to the next one. Sure enough, I did it. And I started laughing, and I said, Lord, I said, I have been trying to do this for a week. Why have I not been able to get it? And I promise you, as clear as a bell, he said, you didn't ask me. <laughs> You didn't ask me. You know, and I think sometimes we take that for granted, that God will help us with any situation, not just the great big giant ones that we think we can't control, right? Or the great big giant ones that are out there that we think we don't have the faith to pull in. God will help us with any of it. All we got to do is ask. He just simply said, you didn't ask me. So if you're working on a puzzle and you're stuck, stop and ask him today. <laughs> there is no problem too big. <clears throat>
Father God in heaven, I am thankful for the day that we have, this day that you have given us, this blessed opportunity to be back in the house of the Lord again. Father, I pray that we listen to the Spirit of God, and that, Lord, that we obey all things according to your will. Father, we call in your name, seeking you for your blessing. And God, I pray for this congregation today. That, Lord, as we have gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and, Lord, that you would bless in each and every heart, that, Lord, that you would lift us up, and, oh, God, you would give us of your grace. And, Father, we pray these things in the loving and holy name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. It's good again to be in the house of the Lord. And we thank God for our musicians. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> they add so much to the church. And Chris was playing so many runs back there, I thought he was going to hit the aisle just any minute. <laughs> but it sounded good. But it is truly a privilege to be back in the house of the Lord and to gather together with you. And it is wonderful to see our pastor in the house. Amen, brother. Good to see you. Amen. Sister.
Amen. 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 Sister Joyce. And dishes from the funeral back in this kitchen. Back in this kitchen. Don't, you don't have to go all the way down the hill, just right here. All right. It is truly a privilege to see everyone. Boy, we'd be like almost. If we'd have got three more people, we could have had a house full. Amen. I don't know. Maybe they all stepped out for just a minute and they'll be back. But we appreciate the blessing of God and how that he has richly blessed us. I want to mention Mark Miles here this morning. And uh, Mark, lift your hand up where I see you. Mark Miles. Where are you? Oh, yeah, over here. Okay. Now. Whenever we dismiss to, today, about 18 or 20 of you go by and shake his hand and tell him how glad you are to see him. Amen. Mark, great to have you in the house of the Lord. We appreciate it. God has been so gracious and so kind to us. And uh, I don't know how that we could ever hope to repay him. For all that he has done. But it's by his grace. Amen. We can't. It's his grace. Doris went out. Bought some things the other day. Bought me some new hankies. <laughs> now I guess she was afraid that somebody might steal some of mine. So she got some with my initial on it. Now, Ricky, Ronnie, these are mine. <laughs> but we appreciate God and his goodness. And Ricky, I don't know why you sitting way back there. I can't hardly see you back there. Since I got my new eyes, they don't work well. <laughs> and uh, I can see... Mostly the front row. After that, we're thankful for ever who it is that is here. <laughs> but if, if, I, if you ask me to identify you, you better get some visitor's cards out. But we are appreciative of all that God has been doing inside of the household of faith. We have a lot of people out that are sick. We've heard some this morning that are sick, some that have been sick and are still trying to recover. And we don't need to stop praying. But we need to continue to speak to God on behalf of these needs. There are people that are suffering. Stephanie mentioned just a few moments ago about the wonderful people in Ukraine. This is a sovereign nation of peoples that were not threatening anyone. They weren't attacking anyone. They weren't even speaking bad about anybody. And yet, they're dying today because of evil. Recognize it for what it is. It's the evil that is in this world. We are a people, as was mentioned, that are blessed to live in this nation that we're living in, but we have to understand evil abounds everywhere. We are seeing things that if you had asked us 20 years ago, would we ever see these things happen? We would have said no. It is impossible. We have a Supreme Court. We have a Constitution. We have a House and Senate and a presidency. And we would have said it would never happen. But yet it's happening. And... I don't want to get carried away in all of this this morning, but I think it's important for us to hold up. We have a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ that are in the Ukraine. 
And they're living in fear, huddled in basements. That lady that was on the other days with her three children in a basement bomb shelter. Are you kidding me? Hiding in a basement makeshift bomb shelter. She and her three children. They need to have her on every three and a half minutes on every channel. One of the most articulate people that I have heard spent just a few moments with her husband he kissed his children goodbye and now he's out fighting she don't know if she'll ever see him again these things are not right but it is nothing more than a sign of the time in which we're living and let me tell you The Bible says that in the last days, these things are going to wax worse and worse. And just like she was articulating very clearly, don't think that it won't happen here. It's at our doorstep. But we have a consolation. My hope is not in this government. My hope is not in the power, which is the most powerful military in the world. But Rome was the most powerful military in the world, and it crumbled almost overnight. We're not guaranteed things in this world that we try to do or perfect or whatever have you. But our hope can't lie in these things. And this is why that we have the Word of God. And I made mention to you the other day, why do we come to church? Why is it necessary that we come to church? And I just simply told you, it's because you're so mean. (laughs) That's it. I mean, it's simple. We need the house of God. We need to gather together with the saints. I appreciate Uh, our television ministry. I look on there every now and then and I watch the services. And I watch them, every one of them. Even after I've been in them. (laughs) Even after I've preached in them. I get all kinds of things out. I said, boy, I said that? Can't believe that. And ooh, I wish I hadn't said that. (laughs) Some of those too. But I appreciate that television ministry. It's a wonderful tool. But it's a tool. It does not take the place of the house of God. We need to be here together. I I appreciate uh, this crowd of people, Brother Danny, that we have. I appreciate our pastor being able to be out and be with us. He's a strength and a source uh, of encouragement. And I appreciate him. And I appreciate every one of you. I draw off of every one of you. Those two or three that say amen, you don't know how much that means. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord. That's about the last one of those I'll get today. But anyway, (laughs) we coaxed it out of you. Amen. But God is gracious. He loves his people. He wants us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. But he wants us to join together because we draw strength one from another. Our pastors encourage this time and time and time again from this pulpit to come out and be in the house of the Lord. We don't need to lean on a television. I can't talk to a television. I talk to it all the time. Doris said, who are you talking to? I said, just television. <laughs> they don't answer back right. And I don't think I'm really having that big of an effect on them. But it's a one-way street. But we need to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to Second Peter. 
I've been in the epistles of the, of the church here for a while. And I like them. Because they're the word of God. And because they're given under the inspiration of the spirit of God. Second Peter, beginning with the first chapter. I'm going to read a few verses. Beginning with the second verse, the Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now that's going to be the crux of what we're going to talk about this morning. That we gain that knowledge. And this knowledge be multiplied along with that grace and peace because the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ is what's going to sustain us. Amen. You can't just live on grandma's experience. You can't live on and, and hope and pray. I've had people tell me, well, I've got a sainted grandma praying for me. I said, I do too. And she prayed for me very much. And she held me up before the Lord alone before I ever knew anything about him. And those prayers are still being answered today. Amen. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart. I know it. I feel it. She was an inspiration, but Somewhere down the line, Brother Jimmy, I had to make a decision myself. All I can do is up here is try to encourage a person to look into the things of God, to watch or look into their own life and see what they need from Christ. That's all we can do. Brother Danny gets up here and preaches and he encourages you and he tries to get you to see. But the only thing he can do is just that. The rest of it is on you. Now, whether or not you come to an altar of prayer and sincerely repent of your sin and ask Christ sincerely to come into your life, that is that you have given yourself then unto him and whatever his will is, that's what you're going to obey. And unless you've done that, it doesn't amount to anything. We come into the house of the Lord and we expect him to receive from God. What did you bring? You want to come before the altar of God? What are you bringing to the altar of God? There's more to this than just me, me, my, my, I won't. God has no problem with your seeking for things from him. God has no problem with that. You're his children. Your child comes to you. What is? He's got your undivided attention. Whatever it is that that child needs, you're going to sit right there and try your best to get that. First thing off the bat, you're going to do those things that you can without him having to ask. You're going to try to provide a roof over their head food on their table. You're going to try to uh, every now and then take them to Disneyland. Amen. Amen. Buy them some new shoes. I'm not buying them none of them $190 shoes, I can tell you now. <laughs> Your feet will get exercised on the pavement by themselves. You waiting on that program. But you're going to do everything that you can to provide for them, whatever it is. And you may buy them that $190 pair of shoes. Make my son feel bad because, well, they ought it. But, well, you're not. <laughs> Every now and then you just have to say that. <laughs> but anyhow, God said, that through the knowledge of, our, of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, that grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Whatever it is that you have need of in your life, may this be multiplied unto you. Grace. What is that grace? The un, 
we, we say the unmerited favor of God. Okay, that's fine enough. The unmerited favor of God. We seek out and we need the grace of God. And what is that grace? Before you can ever ask or think, the answer is already on its way. That's grace. You didn't do anything for it. You didn't even ask for it yet. But God has already got the answer on the way. Oh, praise the Lord. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Praise God. It's all according to his divine power. It's all according to him. If you're looking for something else, you're looking for somebody else. If you're coming here expecting Richard Clark to be able to bless you or to uplift you, you're going to be greatly disappointed. I'm good, but I'm not that good. If God's not in it, there's nothing going to happen. Amen? Amen? I don't seek for myself, but I seek to do the will of God. According to, as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to, unto, or called us to glory and virtue. We're going to talk about some of these things. But God has given us a road map. God has given us a direction. We don't need to be worrying about if we're going to be able to accomplish it or not. For God has already endued you with power from on high. He's already made you acceptable in the beloved. You don't have to worry about am I going to make it or am I not. Yes, you are. As long as you hold on to the unchanging hand of God, you will not fail. You will not fail. But God has given us grace and mercy and brought us unto glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Now listen to this verse right here. Listen to it. We are given unto, unto us, what about, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What is that great promise in the New Testament? The Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God. Why? Because he will lead you into all things. You won't have to worry about it. His Spirit will lead you into the deep things of God. You need to know something of God? Talk to God. His Spirit will provide. He will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on you that you won't be able to receive them all. Why? Because he loves you. God loves you. Amen. Go back to it just a minute. You're his child. Praise God. Why in the world would you think God wouldn't care about you? Why would you think God has forsaken me? He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's with you always, even to the end of the world. You don't have to worry about where God is. God is right here, right now, on time, all the time. Praise God. You don't have to worry about it. Amen. But he's given unto us precious promises. And that precious promise, the Spirit of God, praise the Lord, it was important in the early church. He's important today. Because you can escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, 
Amen. Oh, yeah. Got eight minutes. And we're going to go through there. Hey, we got a clock back here. All right, amen. But we have a, a problem in the world, and that problem in the world is called lust. Those things that are in there into the heart of man. Those things, some things can be controlled. Some things, we just kind of let them slide. It's according to how we want to approach this with God. Amen. We have the power because the Bible said we're more than conquerors. We're overcomers. Praise the Lord. We don't have to sit back and say, well, I'm subject to this whim or I'm subject to that lust in my life. I can't get around the corner. That's because you're not walking around it. Listen to the leadership of the Spirit of God. This lust of the world. What, what in the world is he talking about in here? That is the desire of your heart. Amen? What is the desire of your heart? That lust, that's where it is. You can go through here, I can come to church, I can pay my tithes, I give a little and offer it every now and then, shake somebody's hand, tell them how much I love them, how much I care, and all of these other things, but then you give yourself over to the lust of the flesh before you can get to the house. You can overcome that if you will. Amen. If you're satisfied with where you are, then live in that. But you'll never, never get a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is the problem right there in the whole crux of the matter. Your relationship with Jesus Christ is false. You've got to turn yourself back around. You've got to go back at one place, the Bible said you got to go back and do those first works over again. You didn't get it right the first time. I told you when we used to pray through, they'd put arms around you and hold you down there till you prayed through. If it's tomorrow morning, it'll be tomorrow morning, but you're going to pray through before you get up and leave. I don't need a feel good. I need a relationship with Jesus Christ. One that when I turn my face to the wall, I know that the God Almighty has already heard my prayer and that answer is already on its way. That's the kind of relationship I want. That's the kind of relationship I require. Because that relationship is required of me. Amen. We can give ourselves over to the whims of the enemy. I told you about that feel good. I feel good when I'm in the presence of God. Oh, yes. I feel the, the warm glow of the spirit of the living God. I feel the grace of God. I feel the peace of God. I feel the knowledge of God. I feel the understanding of God. I know that he is real and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But let me tell you something, I don't depend on a feeling. I didn't come into this thing with a feeling, but God has given me knowledge by his grace. Amen. Nay, man. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to sit there and say, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. Yes, you are. Quit that. Stop that. Oh, I don't know if I can live for Christ. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can live that way. Oh, yes, you can. You won't do it in yourself, but through the leading and the directing and the power of the eternal God, through his spirit, you will live that life. You won't be lost, but you will live according to his word and according to his will. And besides this, giving all diligence, 
Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. We are going to have to give ourselves unto God. No, no other way around it. If we're going to make this thing, we're going to have to live for God. Amen. Amen. Go back into the Word of God. How many hours a day do you spend reading the Word of God? This is the bread of life. You can't grow without it. If you're expecting to come here, now you can hear Danny and he, you go, oh, yeah, now that was wonderful. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, you're not getting to hear Danny now. You're listening to me. Amen. I'm probably coming up a little short. But we're doing all that we can do. But the best that we can do will never take the place of the living word of God. Amen. Amen. It's not dead, it's alive. And that word is what's going to sustain you. That word right there is what's going to keep you when the world's on fire. That thing's going to stand when everything else is gone and dead and rolled up like a scroll. That thing's still going to be alive. And because you have anchored yourself in it, one day you'll hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Praise the Lord. Enter into the glories of knowing the Lord. Amen. Those glories are now. I feel the presence of God. I feel the glory of God. I feel the peace of God. I feel the encouragement of God. I know that God lives within my life. Why? Because I know that he does because his word says he does. Not because I feel good. I can feel good because the dogs won. I have a t-shirt now. I go to a concert, I go anywhere, I get a t-shirt. Amen. We're going to go hear Hill song and some of them here shortly. I'll get another t-shirt. Amen. But in this t-shirt I got now, it's a picture of the state of Georgia. And on the top half of Georgia, it's got a big emblem showing the bulldogs. On the bottom, it's got a big emblem showing the braves. And the caption says, State of Champions. Amen. Amen. Now, I feel good about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wore that shirt the other day just as proud as I could be and not a soul said a word. <laughs> not one mumbling word. I went home, took it off, put it on the hanger, and stuffed it back in the closet. <laughs> My feel good didn't amount to much. My feel good in this thing doesn't amount to much, but my relationship with Jesus Christ is what's mattering. It's because I love him. And I've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light by his grace and through his spirit and that in faith. I believe God. When everything else is falling apart in your life, believe God. Amen. My prayer is for those suffering saints and that horrid, terrible thing that is happening around on the other side of the world. But you know what I'm saying? Even so come Lord Jesus. Just keep us one more day. Bless those people one more time. Give them that encouragement of knowing that I'm not alone. It's not the United States that's for us. It's not Great Britain that's for us. It's not France that's for us. But I have a God that lives within my life. And whatever else is happening, I can turn and say, God, let me have that peace just one more time. Let me see your grace just one more time. And God will hear and answer that prayer. In your life today, 
If you're not experiencing that grace and that peace and that favor of God, you need to stop. Turn. Turn back over towards where God is. Because somewhere you've probably walked off the path. It's straight and narrow. Few that find it. But praise God if you're on it. You don't have to worry about the fiery darts of the enemy. You don't have to worry about the wiles of the devil. You don't have to fear the darkness that is groping and, f- and filling this world. Because the light of Jesus Christ is at the end of the way. And you can see him. Praise the Lord. All you have to do, Lord, come in. Be the master of my life. Forgive me of my sin. Plant my feet on the solid rock one more time that I might live. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, I thank you for this day. I thank you, God, that your spirit has been in this house. Lord, your word has encouraged us, O oh God, one more time to seek your face, to know of you, Lord, to receive of you, and, O oh God, to let you rule and reign within our hearts and our lives, O oh God, that in all things we can do those things which are pleasing in your sight. Father, bless us one more time. God, let your spirit abide, and Lord, strengthen In the name of Jesus, our Savior, let your people rejoice. Let us sing the songs of Zion. Let us come back out into the house of the Lord, rejoicing and praising God, leaping and singing, and, oh God, knowing that our God is going to meet us here and that we're going to receive of you. For, Lord, you are our blessing. Lord, you are our hope. God, you are our peace and salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.